Hey everybody, it's me, Eric, from epautos.com, your libertarian car guy. Finally found the camera, which I had put in my truck and forgotten about. So, um, I'm back to uh, doing these little walk-arounds, and this is the 2018 Volkswagen Tiggy, Tiguan. Hard to say I call it the Tiggy. The Tiggy has long been one of my favorites in the compact crossover SUV segment just because uh, it's not an appliance like uh, a lot of the other ones in the same general price range like the Toyota RAV4 and the Honda CRV and I don't mean that in a derogatory way actually um, the CRV uh, and the RAV are great practical vehicles but they are appliances uh, they're not particularly fun to drive they don't have a lot of power uh, their appliances. They're great for practical purposes. The Tiggy has always been a little bit different in that it came standard with a turbocharged engine and actually had some power. And in the early years, not anymore, but in the early years, you could get it with a manual transmission. Um, Volkswagen has more or less stuck with that formula for 2018 with some interesting changes. Uh, this model now is a little bit bigger than the old one was, and it is about the same size uh, as the CRV and the RAV4, so it's really mid sized now, or very close to it. One of the criticisms of the previous gen Tiggy uh, was that the back seats were a little bit tight and it had less cargo capacity than the others, which was absolutely true. Um, so that's been rectified. Um, something else that's been changed, and initially uh, you might screech in horror, as I did when you find out about it, uh, is that while it still comes standard with the 2.0 liter turbocharged engine, the horsepower is noticeably down. Uh, previously it produced 200 horsepower. Uh, now it's down to 184, and gosh, I'm doing this off the cuff of my sleeve here, so you'll have to bear with me. But torque is up substantially. Um, it is now, I think, about 230-something uh, foot-pounds. Um, you'll have to read the review uh, when I refer back to my uh, press kit and can actually give you the exact numbers, but it's up significantly. Not only is the total torque output up, um, the RPM at which the torque is developed uh, has been lowered, so it actually feels a little bit stronger and quicker, particularly in the low and mid-range, which, let's face it, is where most people drive. Um, the previous 2.0 engine uh, produced power higher up, and so, you know, it was a more revvy engine, and you tended to want to uh, hit the gas to get it to do, do what it needed to do. In this one, not so much. Um, this one really has excellent off-the-line response and mid-range, so that's a big plus. Uh, and, of course, you've got more room now. Let's see if I can uh, pop everything open and show you that. The back seats have about an inch more room now. There's that. And uh, the total cargo capacity, if you drop the seats, is now very class competitive. I think it's about 73 cubic feet total. Um, so uh, the bottom line is it is now as practical a vehicle as the appliances but it's still a more fun to drive vehicle than the appliances. Also, interestingly, uh, somehow Volkswagen has managed to price this thing very, very competitively uh, with the RAV and the CRV. Um, and uh, it's worth pointing out, too, uh, that the RAV doesn't even offer a turbocharged engine. And its standard engine is a lot weaker than uh, the engine that you get here and the performance is a lot worse. Uh, both the RAV uh, and the CRV are pretty, pretty slow pokey. They take about 10 seconds to get to 60, uh, and the Tiggy gets there in about the mid sevens. So the Tiggy is a substantially quicker car. Um, and the gas mileage is pretty good. It's not quite as good as some of the class leaders, but we're talking about a difference of two or three miles per gallon overall. It's not a huge big difference. Let's have a look at the inside. Something else that you get too uh, when you buy um, a Volkswagen, uh, it being a German car and related to Audis, uh, Audis being entry luxury or luxury cars, is that you get a little bit uh, of a nicer experience. Um, the car has the feel of uh, a German car, an import car and um, it's nice and quiet and the ride is really good and the handling is really good uh, sporty good you know it'll actually take a corner uh, which uh, most of the others in this class generally won't do oh and there's mr fuzz my 
big Maine Coon cat. Oh, and the final thing I wanted to mention too is that they have increased the ground clearance substantially. Uh, I have a friend who has a Subaru Forester and um, she really likes her Forester because it has the ground clearance that we need out here in the sticks when it snows. Uh, Volkswagen has upped it to almost eight inches. So the ground clearance that you get with the Tiggy is now virtually the same as you would get with a Subaru Forester. Uh, and when you get it with the available four motion all wheel drive, this thing should be as competent a uh, backwoods snow car uh, as a Forester. And uh, I can tell you also, I'm a fan of Subarus, but Subarus are noisy. Uh, this one's not. Uh, and this one's got a lot more uh, guts uh, when you punch it than the Subaru does, which does not come standard with a turbocharged engine. Anyway, um, there'll be more up at epautos.com shortly, and I just put up a, another rant about what I like to call the imbecile tax. Um, <laughs> another piece of idiot proofing that's coming your way next year. Um, Nissan has announced they're going to put in the uh, in, in some of their SUVs a backseat child reminder for people who are too addled uh, to remember that they left their kid in the backseat uh, to roast like a pork loin. And of course, it probably won't be optional. It'll probably be included in uh, every car, so everybody will have to pay for it, and the government will probably mandate it too for safety. Uh, the safety cult makes my teeth ache. Anyway, uh, thanks for viewing, and we'll catch up with you again soon.